And I think leadership is more than just what we think the cookie cutter leader is doing the right thing. I think a huge component of leadership is influence. And part of influence is relationships like you, like you talked about. But I think it's easier to teach someone with influence to be a leader than to teach someone that does the right thing to have influence. And I just wanted to offer that up. Um, I just wanted to offer that up. And I think the whole captain thing is a really fun conversation because I, I know a lot of coaches that do a great job never selecting captains. And I know a lot of coaches do a great job selecting the captains themselves, and a lot of coaches do a great job having the players select captains. I think it's all in the framing, and I think it's all in determining what a leader looks like. So let's let's get some uh, let's talk through some specifics here. So I think that you would never go into a season without a clear and written out plan of what your offensive scheme is going to look like. You would never go into a season without a clear understanding amongst you, your coaching staff, and the players of what your defensive scheme is going to look like. Why then would we go into a season without a clear and written out scheme of what our leadership plan looks like? The definition of a leader, the steps that we're going to take to grow them, and then communicate it clearly out to our players and teach them. We teach them basketball, we should teach them leadership. But I think the same steps, if we, if we truly believe that it's going to, I'm, I'm going to throw another quote in here right now, a little early. I have it later in the slides. Um, coach Greg Popovich, the coach of the San Antonio Spurs, has a quote that I love. You'll get it later, but you, if you want to jot it down now, um, you, you can. He said two things recently in an interview. The first thing he said is this, a, a player coached team is always more successful than a coach coached team. A player coach team is always more successful than a coach coach team. And that's what I believe the value of growing leaders is. Hey, we as coaches, we can focus on one thing. We as coaches, we can coach one thing at a time. But if we can grow up leaders and there are multiple things being coached multiple times and not just on the court when we're not even there, the cumulative effect of that ongoing coaching reminder is going to be more success on the basketball court. If that's when you have a leadership rich culture. But you establish a culture just like it's been talked about a lot this weekend. Man, you've got to celebrate the small instances of that. You've got to emphasize it. It's not, it's not what you teach, it's what you emphasize. And another great uh, quote that I read recently is this, that which you allow, you encourage. That which you allow, you encourage. If you allow there, if you, if you allow your team to go through a practice without anyone stepping up in leadership, you've encouraged a lack of leadership. If, if, you, if, you allow, if you allow someone to get away with not holding their teammates responsible, you're encouraging that behavior. That which you allow, you encourage. And I'm loving quotes right now, so here's the third one. This is the other Popovich quote. quote. I'm, this is, I could just press play. And here's, here's the other one. Um, Popovich said in the same interview where he talked about the player-coach team versus the coach-coach team, he said, the number one thing I've learned in my old age as a coach is to shut up and let them talk. It's to shut up and let them talk. And I think I would argue that he's the best coach in the world right now. And he's talking about talking less. I know we as coaches, we talk a lot. Um, I believe he, he, he shutting up and talking less. Oh, I'm, one more quote. We're going. Rick Pitino. So <laughs> what was that? Rick Pitino. Uh, Rick Pitino has this rule for his assistant coaches in practice. And I've, I've thought about this. I don't know if I agree with it or not, but I think it's, it's valuable. He said, he said, his rule for assistant coaches, my assistant coaches must coach in seven second sound bites. Seven second sound bites. When asked why, he said, if we do all the talking, the players never learn to. If we do all the talking, never learn so Seven second sound bites, that's all you're at. It's more than seven seconds. Shut up, assistant coach B, C, D. You know? And then he, he doesn't hold himself to that standard, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> the next one, like we were talking, how many leaders do you want? So I believe everyone is a leader, right? And we, we talked about this a little bit. And you might not want everyone talking. You might not want everyone, you know, Holding, holding them accountable on their dress code, whatever. But I think everyone's a leader. And what I've seen in, in most teams is this 10-80-10 breakdown. And Jack Welch, uh, longtime CEO of General Electric, is one that popularized this. But I, I believe it's not just in corporations and in businesses that you see a 10-80-10 breakdown. I've seen it in nearly every team. And here's essentially what, what it is. You're always going to have 10% that are the top 10% that are the ones that are doing and saying the right thing. You're always going to have 10% that are the bottom 10%, and they're the ones that are contaminating, right? They're the poison. They're, they're the ones that are doing the wrong thing, cutting up and dragging the team down. And then on most of your teams, you've got that middle percent that is the majority, that is the 80%, that's either going to be uplifted by the top 10%, 
or is going to be poisoned and contaminated by the bottom 10%. And the battle for the leadership of your team is for that 80%. The battle's for the 80%. And so really in, in growing leaders, I believe everyone's a leader, but leadership for the top 10% or what Jack Welch calls the A players, leadership for an A player is taking a B player, a B player being this middle 80%. Leadership for an A player is taking a B player and making him an A. That's leadership, right? Leadership for a B player is either becoming an A or choosing the right group to follow. That's leadership, choosing the right group to follow. And I think that's something we have to teach as well, teach them how and when to follow. And then leadership for this bottom 10% is just to stop contaminating. It's just a stop, elimination of behavior, and that's leadership, and that's leading themselves. And I think that we got to have a plan on leading each aspect because uh, another great thing that I heard uh, Coach uh, TJ say a bunch is he says this, coach your team. Coach your team. Each year, your team's different. You're not coaching a team you had five years ago. You're not coaching the team you wish you had. You're not coaching the team down the street. You're coaching your team. And your team's different. Each player on your team's different. And teaching each player on your team to lead is probably going to be a little bit different as well. And like I, we would have never thought that Julius Thomas was going to be our leader. We had to coach that team. We started out coaching the ideal team. We didn't have the ideal team. We had to do something different and drastic. And, you know, if you were to write down three words about leadership right now, like we asked that question, what do you think a leader is? I would give these three words personally for me. I would say leadership is one about doing extra, doing more than is expected of you, doing more than your share. A lot of players come in, they think leadership is about doing less. Right? I get to yell and tell, and I get to tell the freshmen what to do, so now I get to sit back. Right? No, leadership is about doing extra. I think the second thing is leadership is about energy, and you mentioned positivity. I think energy is part of that, but it is exhausting to be a leader, and it's exhausting because of the responsibility that you have to take. Right? It's exhausting to have to think about getting Johnny to class and making sure that Billy's not torn up about his girlfriend breaking up with him, and make sure that Sam is, is not in a shooting slump forever because he's losing his confidence. It's exhausting to worry about all those things. Right? So the second thing is about energy, and the third one I think leadership is about, and I've mentioned this already, is about influence. It's about influence. Be students, be teachers, be politicians, be preachers. Be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be truth seekers.